I remember seeing this weird article once. Maybe it was when the shift in yeah, I think it was when maybe the shift around I would say do you remember when it was like all the rich kids of Instagram? Do you remember that that Instagram account? I'm not sure if it's still around anyway, but let me see if I can find it. Um Rich Kids of Instagram. Okay, supposedly it's still here. Rich Kids Balance on what's this? Is this the same one? <laughs> Let's see if I can find it. I don't think that's the one. Rich Kids. Rich kids of Instagram. Let's see if I find one second. Profile. Why isn't that on here anymore? I don't know. Okay, maybe it's not on there. Oh, okay, yeah, Rich kids of the internet. Okay, but well, there's another one called Rich kids of the Maybe this is the same one, same sort of. I don't see how many followers they got. It's a big, yeah, it's a big one. It's like nearly half, half a million. So. I remember around the time when these sort of accounts started popping up everywhere, right? These rich kids of Instagram accounts, where especially they um, featured the kids of, you know, families whose wealth that, you know, is unaccounted for, people that work in the manufacturing industries, not anyone super famous. There would be some super famous families there, but for the most part, it's just undercover people, you know? Some guy who, who fucking invented the, the screwdriver or the fucking bolt that you put on the bottom of your TVs. Those kind of dudes who have money for, like, generation and generations. So those kids will, you know, more likely than not, are the quintessential rich kids who, you know, they don't really do much. They just kind of uh, spend their parents' money and just exist, which is, you no, know, there's no slight to them, I think. There is a common, there is a some sort of weird common group think where everyone thinks, oh, if I was a rich kid, I would be doing all this or try all that sort of nonsense. But you wouldn't really, innit? if you were, if you had the means to, you know, some pe- again, I don't rely on my parents for anything, but I know some people do, and they and they take the piss with their parents as it is. So just imagine you taking the piss with your parents just as it is because you know you're asking your mom to borrow you a hundred quid so you can buy a gram of coke, you know, on the you know the weekend before paying it because you got no money. Yeah, so what would you do if your parents suddenly happened to be the fucking founder of B or, or B Sky B or something? You would be all over their fucking account. So I think a lot of that hate towards them was a bit unjustified. But I remember around this sort of time, and you're going back to the point, there was a there was a period in time where this was what Instagram was all about, right? Flaunting your possession, showing how cool you were, you could get chicks and shit. It is obviously um, Dan Belzer and I wonder if he's posting normally whilst Corona is going on actually is he doing it or is he being a bit like undercover what's he doing I'm sure some people on the internet be like oh you shouldn't be doing that you should be doing it or is he on lockdown with all these hotties he probably is right yeah he's on lockdown with all the hotties okay going through old pics is he posting anything new I don't know but he's not really saying anyway but anyway I remember this this being the big thing isn't it right posting you know all your inconspicuous uh, spending all that sort of stuff then there was a shift where people started posting um what's this guy what's this video about yeah. okay let him do what he wants but then i remember there was a bit of a shift where people started um posting more experiential stuff right um that kind of boasted the maybe the trend of people holding you know girls in front of the guy holding his holding a hand out like in that weird position and then you know they go away together on some magical holiday trip and and a lot of those kind of youtubers who had those vlogs where they go to travel the world they don't really tell you what they do most of them are rich kids and they're not but it was a bit of a shift in terms of lifestyle not really actually possessions and what you got and who your friends are but more of a lifestyle thing right and genuine friendships quote unquote but what's the point so uh, but i don't think but uh, yeah i was going to say but with the lockdown maybe we might see a return maybe the people who are suffering from the worst were the ones who purposely were doing those experiential traps like you know like i said fomo traps to make people feel as if they should be missing out something but that person themselves wasn't really interacting and you know living in the moment as they should be it reminds me of that famous you know video from coachella where um someone's taking a picture of somebody but somebody is making the video everyone at coachella like essentially on their phone and not actually enjoying the festival which you know is probably by the by because a lot of the kids that go there are really young it's a mostly a event that's marketed or kind of designed in a way that would bring the best out of it on social the ferris wheel the big plant thing everyone stands in front of where the stages are poor the fact that it's in a big wide open space loads of good sunlight yeah loads of good natural light sorry so you know i know what they're kind of trying to do there but i remember that video going everyone believe oh my god that's crazy but i was like yeah that's what everyone does i think most there's some group of people who don't post that I, I i do it just for mostly privacy reasons because i just want to do my shit but i know a lot of people who kind of 
put out do this kind of fake thing where they go somewhere and then they'll take those pictures but never upload them whilst they're there but then they'll upload them incrementally whilst they're back home to make it seem as if they're, they're still traveling or they'll split out split up the days that they post it so they'll maybe post it over a two to three period even though they're only there for like a weekend and if I, someone asks them in the comments oh why are you guys there were you just hanging out oh, God, i'm so glad i missed you they'll never answer so that kind of goading and that kind of trapping of fomo might stop because people might just be like you know what I don't care where I'm at as long as I have my you know best friend from work my best friend from you know outside of work with me I'm good it might return people back to a form of normality 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 yeah hopefully that's a hope but who knows probably won't but you know you can only live in hope I'll try and be I'm trying to be optimistic as I can with this stuff but one thing that made me really laugh actually that I saw earlier or that made me kind of pause and think was trying to understand the other side of things isn't it so this video went around of all these protests in America with some people in different states protesting the lockdown and wanting to be, you know, back to work or when to just go about their everyday life. And I understood where they're coming from, to be honest. I think it's good to have compassion with people during this time because, again, I think it's unprecedented. No one really knows what to do, as proved by some of the governments and what their kind of reactions towards it. So, you know, being a little bit understanding can maybe... Uh, is more of an interesting way to look at things and has more layers to it than just simply writing them off as being dumb and crazy and this video kind of explains a little bit it's from global news quickly check this out here a healthy immune system and i take care of my body i eat the right food i take vitamins i drink the right water vitamin d vitamin c it's been proven already so we have everything that we need we don't need a vaccine Okay, so that, that opinion is obviously insane, isn't it, right? Saying you don't need the vaccine because you, you're healthy and you need all that stuff. I don't have, obviously, but I don't know. Maybe intrinsically, it's very difficult to make people care about a world that they're not going to inhabit after this thing has passed or just past their maybe immediate family. You know, when everyone says, oh, when you have kids, your perspective changes and all that sort of stuff, right? That's a good thing. Okay, I get it. It makes you maybe focus down a little bit and you know where your priorities are and you know what you should be focusing on what you shouldn't be focusing on um it makes you kind of you know stop wasting time and just in general right you, you priorities get lasered in but why weren't they lasered in and why weren't why didn't you have more of a kind of world view of the way you're kind of part the play the part you play in the world before that why did it need a kid to come into world you to suddenly give a shit about other kids right that's the problem so if it, i'd imagine if you're going to i'd imagine the, the problem would be uh, unless it serves our own self-interest we don't give a shit right so i'd imagine if you were for a charity that was looking after that was kind of it's emma was to this to house kids who were grew up in you know, displaced kids who grew up in really bad neighborhoods and you went around to i don't know just a charity just give money to, to build these things not to not for anyone to even house these kids and you went to an area that kind of consisted of a large population of people who didn't have any kids and was single and probably well you know more likely not to have them later on in life they probably won't be more likely to give any money right as opposed to going to an area where they have a lot of team they have a big college university you know uh, attendance all that sort of stuff so people might just want to only serve the things that they give a shit about which is good which is understandable in one way but also quite worrying that you have to go you something has to affect you directly in order for you to give a shit which is quite bleak that means that unless it happens to you you don't care um, and then when it does happen to you suddenly now everything becomes so clear but again i think if you're from the land of the home land of the brave home of the free you have to be able to just let these people protest this it may be ill advised you might there might be a video of like you know five years later and you go to these people and half of them are not around anymore but i don't i understand the actual idea that you know maybe these people aren't as well off as uh, me and you are right because i think there is a lack of understanding that if you're actually working from home or you have the ability to be furloughed that you're actually in the top five percent of the population right in terms of affluence in terms of life expectancy in terms of education in terms of a um, earning potential you have more range in that regard than people like this who who ex who only exist based on the work that they do on any given day so they can't take time off they can't just be off for an, a, a month and everything be okay because they're not too sure if their manufacturing plant will stay and be around they're not too sure if the shopping center they work in or the cafe whatever it is and what we're seeing now is that these people that work these menial jobs which is funny because a lot of them you know the, the term essential work has been um touted in terms of categorizing the workforce non-essential essential 
and I think the the work the positions that people look down upon the most, right? The pe- the positions that people think, oh, if I were there, I'd be on my lowest, are now the ones that are basically holding this economy up together, right? The people that post money in the morning, the guy that delivers your Uber Eats, the guy that delivers your Amazon, the person that works in the supermarket, the person that does your checkout. Like all these people are super integral to making sure this this society of ours doesn't crumble. People just are protesting here. And the shutdown give me liberty or give me COVID, which is an insane statement. Isn't it? There's no reason to shut the whole state down. 99% of the people, for the one less than 1% of people that are vulnerable to the, to the virus. And the facts speak for themselves, it's true. It's an interesting argument, though, isn't it? Which I think is maybe just, there might be, an, like, I'd imagine if you lived in a state that had a prominent or had a large Asian or Asian um, population who were maybe away during that time of the year before the Chinese New Year or whatever maybe yeah or yeah maybe they were during that time or just away from family you could be advised or you might you wouldn't be way out of line to maybe halt any travel from that place or from that particular region into your state until a given time right that would be probably quite correct to do um so I like the idea that different states do different ways are reacting to it different ways but obviously you want you know the um the white house to have precedent and to kind of set the mandate but if they do live in a state that has a low population of people who are over the age of 60 they might be they might have a point you might need to op- leave certain industries open and tell other people to stay inside in it that could be a big thing too um and i think that might end up happening i think we might get to a point where they just they just can't keep people indoors anymore that's just it because what you don't want is civil disobedience in it you want to get to the point where you are giving people permission to go back outside as opposed to them rebelling and saying now nah, fuck that we're not listening to you ever again just going because when this once they go out you know you have no idea what's going to happen in it look what happened with the london riots right one uh running with police with a young man who ends up dying and suddenly you know the half of fucking east london's burning down so they have to be very careful about that Yeah, loads of them just protesting outside the what? Concern, I've been, it's been politicized. This is a tool now. This is a tool to keep us at home and on house arrest. We're not on house arrest. We've been asked to social distance. We can wear our masks. We, we can stay distance from people. I'm not on house arrest. I refuse. I walk out of my house now. Okay, fair enough, man. And again, who knows? Man? History will history will judge who is right or wrong in this case, isn't it? I thought that was interesting. What else we want to go through? Let's move on in. Let's get that off the screen. Then you have this crazy lady doing this. I don't know what this dance is about, but I thought this was quite lols. Um, what's her name? Angela something. Angela Bel Camino. I'm sure this is maybe a troll account, or if it's not a troll account, it's probably one of those pop people on social who just, you know, say things for the sake of it or do things for the sake of it. But this video was going viral over the weekend, and it's just nuts. So this girl is doing this "Liberate America" of Trump dance. I don't know what this means. I'm not sure if it's a performance piece. I'm not sure if it's one of those drama school student people. What? She's an actor at something. What's she an actor at? Actor at where? I don't know. But anyway, what? Look at this. Like, what is that? If you're just listening to the podcast, it's this girl standing in the alleyway somewhere with her friends, wearing jeans that have knee holes next to her shins. It looks like. And she's got those basic bitch like you know wet high you know high heel boots on and she's doing this weird dance that's well, i don't know if it's a rain dance to get people that like trump annoyed or something but it's just bizarre this is politics for you isn't it it's like what i don't get any of it i don't understand what's going on but it's what 1.8 million views and i probably added more to it and um yeah this is the other side of the aisle isn't it 
you got one side of people saying, oh, you know, my body, my choice. If I get it, I get it, but I want to go back to work. Then you got people like this who are, I don't know, dancing against what Trump, what he's saying. I don't know, like against his actions, against how he's dealing with it. I don't know what, again, I don't know what it means. Liberate America of Trump. So, okay, cool, man. But yeah, that was interesting. Or was it? I don't know. Maybe I wasted a little bit, 21 seconds of my life. But anyway, let's move on.